Another point I want to bring up is that of rebelliousness and restlessness. This is the time when teenagers are developing hormonally, hormonal development. And they wish to make a statement. I am free or I want to be free. Free from what? Restrictions. When they are in school, there are many, many restrictions. When they are in college, those restrictions seem to be uh, gone. So, what do they do? They engage in smoking, drinking, drugs to their own detriment. It won't help them at all. Rebelliousness also goes together with etiquette lapses. When they are children, how nicely they'll say, good morning, mummy, good morning, daddy, and so on. Or in school, how well they will greet their teachers. But under peer pressures, they forget etiquette. So even if they see the teacher, or even if they see the parent, there's no good morning, no thank you, no please. That's all part of rebelliousness and restlessness. Now, let's look at three sets of habits. Eating habits, spending habits, and study habits. Let's see the first. Eating habits. These are often determined by peers who seem to be having lots of money to throw around. And when they meet in the canteen, all seem to be forced to have fast food, junk food, with Cokes and Pepsis and all sorts of things. Whereas the parents may not be able to afford it. Yet the child says, I don't want any rice and curry and fish. No, give me money for my fast foods. It's a sad thing that parents often give in to this. This is linked with spending habits. They want to show off. They want to earn brownie points for one's self-image. Obviously, this begs the question, whose money is it anyway? Whose money are they spending? It's common knowledge that sometimes they beg, borrow and even steal from their own parents or maybe from others. Hmm? Thus they want the latest in fashions and fads. But they will rarely work for it. I remember I came from a poor family and to see my way through college, I won two scholarships first for the highest in English at the university and then I started giving tuitions because my father could not afford it. Today's child, everything is expected from the parents. I'm sure the verse from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, number 10, could be practiced by parents. What does this verse say? Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. This does not mean that our teenagers should go to work in offices, etc. But even doing simple things at home, sweep the place, keep your clothes in a particular place, organize your bed, help with the washing of the utensils, they will not do. So my dear friends, spending habits we need to be careful about. The third, of course, is study habits. Many bright students gradually stop studying 
because the peers call them bookworms or teacher's pet, teacher's chamcha as they say. Then again, there are others in the peer group who say, why study regularly when you can get through with last minute preparation, 11th hour preparation as they say, or better still, by cheating at the exams. I could tell you a whole lot of ways in which my students that I've seen down the years have resorted to cheating. Why do projects and assignments yourself when you can copy from other students? And then, if they fail, whom do they blame? Not themselves, but the teacher. It's a sad state of affairs. That is why, dear teenagers, if you look at the word habit, H-A-B-I-T, you try to remove the H, what remains? A bit. You try to remove the A, what remains? A bit, just a bit. If you remove the B, what remains? It remains. So therefore remember, habits once formed are difficult to break. So why not resort to having good habits? The next point is untruthfulness. Telling lies putting on a false front. A doctor who was training his medical students in the use of the stethoscope, he took one student at a time and said, I'll put the stethoscope in your ears and I will dab your chest. And if you hear a breathing sound, then you put up your hand. All his students raised their hands and the doctor was very angry. He said, let me open the stethoscope. In that joint there, there was a thick wad of cotton because of which no sound would come. And he said, you are liars. You should have not raised your hand because obviously you could not hear any sound. But you thought you would make me happy and so you raised your hand. Never do that. Yes, my dear teens, it also applies to you and me, of course. Hmm? Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another. Sadly, many youth engage in telling lies on behalf of friends or on behalf of self. They forget that to cover up one lie, you have to tell a hundred more lies. So therefore, do not resort to lying. Otherwise, you will be labelled as a liar. And guess what? Who is the father of lies? Obviously the devil. So let us not be working as agents of the devil. The next point is on romance, love. And among girls especially, the prevailing attitude is everyone has a boyfriend. What is wrong with me? I don't have a boyfriend. And so they engage in the anybody will do for me syndrome, including motorcycle pilots, bus conductors, persons of different faith or social status. They don't bother. So long as they can tell the world, I have a boyfriend. And what does the boyfriend do? He says, if you love me, then you will have sex with me. In many instances, 
this is fueled by the films and TV serials. Many years ago, there was a Hindi film, Ek Duje Ke Liye, and much of it was shot at Donapol. And among the last scenes, they showed the boy and the girl belonging to different communities or castes resorting to suicide because of opposition from their families. And guess what? Many of our youngsters, I cannot prove it, but I've heard that as per Ek Duje Ke Liye, they also resorted to suicide. They forget that real life is different from real life. Real life is what happens in the present. Real life is what is shot on location and is canned on reels. For them, they just want love, love, love. But what is the result? Rapes, abortion, then they feel guilty, they commit suicide, or sometimes are even murdered. Yeah. My dear young boys and girls who may be facing such problems, pray, ask God for help. Pray for the intercession of the saints. For instance, girls have Saint Maria Goretti. She was murdered because she refused to allow a young man to rape her. Then there is Saint Dominic Savio for boys, also a young man but who remained pure because of his love for God. Like this there are many other saints, so pray to them. The next point is making excuses. It seems to be the order of the day. So when you point out a mistake, They'll say, sorry, that's me. Or others will say, I'm like that. God created me like that. Hmm? Using such excuses, many are definitely shirking their responsibility. So what if God has created you in a particular way? You can still overcome those obstacles. There are many beautiful stories of persons without hands and legs but who went on to perform very well in life. Sadly, those who make excuses will not admit their mistakes or their faults. And to get an apology from them, it's next to impossible. Perhaps all this has come down to us from our first parents, Adam and Eve. When God questioned Adam, he said, Eve, this woman whom you put with me, she made me eat the apple. When God questioned Eve, she said, that serpent tempted me to eat the apple. Yes, my dear friends, we can go on giving excuses. The right thing to do is not to pass the buck on, but to say, I made a mistake, let me change. In society, especially amongst youth, there are four categories of youngsters. Stars, rejectees, neglectees, and isolates. Stars are the smart ones. Rejectees are those who are not taken into games, etc. Neglectees are the neglected ones and isolates are those who isolate themselves and do not wish to participate. Now whether we are stars, rejectees, neglectees or isolates, all of us in the process of growing up have faced self-esteem problems. And what happens? We compare ourselves with others and we feel inferior, we feel we are no good or unlovable. And many a time it develops in us jealousy or envy. 
we may say, no one understands me. I'm no good at anything. The other day, I went to a smart child from college. I said, will you do the first reading? She said, no, 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 not me. I feel very frightened to go and uh, do the reading. But I know that when it comes to theater and all other things, she is number one. So it is sad. We have these self-esteem issues. And if these problems of self-esteem are not recognized and handled early on, they may lead to irrational thoughts and behaviors and including suicide down the line. Teachers, parents, be careful not to fuel poor self-image by your nasty comments. The child already has a low self-image and if you say hurtful things, how much lower that self-image will go. So instead, be sympathetic, be empathetic, help the child. Sometimes there could be an element of pride in a shy person. What do I mean by this? A shy person is afraid to make mistakes because people will laugh at him or her. So it shows pride. Let us remember, no one is perfect. Let us learn from our mistakes. And humor will help. Yes, I made a mistake. Let me laugh with others. So when others laugh at me, I will also laugh with them. Humor helps in raising your self-esteem. Turn to the Lord for help. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is focused on you because he trusts in you. I'll repeat that. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is focused on you because he trusts in you. A nice way to handle problems that confront us is the WWJD question. WWJD meaning what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do in this situation or that situation? And very often you will find that if you analyze yourself, you'll be able to do what Jesus wants you to do. My dear youngsters, teenagers, what have we seen today? We have seen peer pressures. P for parallelism, E for echolalia, E for easygoing lifestyle, R for religious beliefs and practices. And what do you get? Peer. P, parallelism, parallelism, E, echolalia, E, easygoing lifestyle, R, religious beliefs and practices. Now let's see pressures. P for priorities. Have your priorities right. R for rebelliousness and restlessness. E for eating habits. S for spending habits. S for study habits, U for untruthfulness, R for romance, E for excuses, and S for self-esteem. Now, if we look at these 13 points, there is one alphabet used, maybe once or twice, and if you look at only these alphabets, you get P, U, R, S, E, purse. A purse contains your important things, your important documents. Let us carry a purse with us, a spiritual purse. So the P from purse is prayer, pray. P also has purpose, have purpose in your life. U is upright behavior. 
engage in upright behavior from young. R is refusal. Learn to say no when your peers invite you to do wrong things. S. Stand up against the crowd. You may be alone, but have the courage of your conviction. And E. Evaluate your day's actions at bedtime. Find out what you did well, what you did wrong, and you will be able to grow and develop spiritually. So that is your purse. Prayer, upright behavior, refusal, learning to say no, standing up against the crowd, and evaluating your day's actions at bedtime. Have an attitude of gratitude. Thank God for all that you have, all that you did during the day, and ask for pardon if you need to change yourself. I'd like to end with Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, especially applicable to you, dear teenagers. Make sure that no one traps you and deprives you of your freedom by some second-hand, empty, rational philosophy based on the principles of this world instead of on Christ. Let me repeat that. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Make sure that no one traps you and deprives you of your freedom by some second-hand, empty, rational philosophy based on the principles of this world instead of on Christ. I don't say I was a saint. I made mistakes and I've reached this level because I learned from my mistakes. My dear young teenagers, learn from the points I've given you, learn from your mistakes and if you pray and ask God's help, He will help you to go through the turbulent years of your teenage. I wish you all the best. God bless you.